Hey guys, today we're going to be doing this very cool render. So if you want to see the full process, make sure to just keep watching. There we go. Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Lille and today we're back in Maya. The, a lot of people have been asking about Maya for a couple of days and don't worry, we're going to be doing Blender tutorials, Maya tutorials, Seabridge tutorials, Substance tutorials, Unreal tutorials, Speed Tree Marbles, like all of the softwares that I know, I'm going to be teaching them to you. So my advice is try to learn as much as you can from all of them because even if we're doing something inside of Blender, that doesn't mean that we can't do it inside of Maya and vice versa. So today we're going to be doing a very cool animation animation of a ship's helm, which is this thing right here. First of all, let me set the project real quick. I was working on some animations earlier today. There we go. And if we go to source images, we're going to bring in this vintage. There we go. Look at how cool this object is. So we're going to be doing a small animation. Uh, one Piece, the One Piece anime has been recently announced, and I thought it was a good idea to do one of these guys right here. So when I take a look at some, uh, like an object like this, I always ask myself, what is the easiest way in which I can model it? And the first thing I notice is that this is a symmetrical object. So if I were to rotate this, in this case, 24 degrees or roughly something like that, I should be able to position this in such a way that I can see that we have a symmetrical thing with the little like handlebars. So um, other than that, we have four pieces. It's the main sort of like round thing right here. This guy's right here, the, the handles itself. The handles on the top and then of course the the center thing that goes into the ship that actually moves the whole thing right so yeah let's start modeling the easiest way that i would start with something like this would be with a pipe so i'm going to go to create polygon primitives and i'm going to create a pipe we're going to rotate this 90 degrees so that it's facing us and then if we go into the inputs we can select the radius for instance push this out a little bit and play a little bit with the thickness to get a radius and a thickness that looks or it gets as close as possible to the actual shape. There we go, something like that. Now, if we take a, do a look at the element right here, you're going to see that it has some sort of like bevel edges. So I'm going to grab all of the edges right here on the front and on the back. Remember to switch between modes, just right click on top of the object. This is not an intro to Maya, so I'm, I'm expecting some of you already have some like experience with Maya. We will be doing a, an intro to Maya like the, with the like that one that we did with Blender, but it's going to be later on. So I'm going to do a bevel right here. And I'm going to keep the segment or the fraction really, really small, something like this and two segments. That way, when we press number three, as you can see, we get this very nice smooth effect. Now I'm going to grab this forward face and this back face right here. Control E again. I'm going to offset a little bit and I'm going to push it up. Okay, that's going to give me that sort of like roundness that we have right there. Actually, I'm going to bring the offset down and I'm going to extrude again. And now we're going to do this and offset again. There we go. So now we get this very, very nice effect. Let's push it a little bit more. And I do want to have this as sort of a hard edge. So I'm going to select all of these elements as, as well and just do another bevel with a small fraction, just one segment in this case. Why? Because when we smooth, I want to have this very, very cool effect right there. I am going to go, though, to this guy right here, this guy right here, this guy, and this guy. And we're going to bevel those with two segments and a small fraction. So that when we press number three, we get this very nice effect. Look at how clean that line looks. That's one of the things that I like about Maya. We don't have to be using any subdivision surface modifiers. We can just press number one and number three at any point, and we are happy. Now, let's go to the top view, and you can see that we have this guys right here. Now, as you can see, the form slightly tricky, right? Not super difficult, but slightly tricky. Here, I'm going to be using one of the tricks. You might have seen it. I'm going to link it over here, which is the curves trick. I'm going to go to curves, create an EP curve, and I'm going to trace the shape of this handle right here, right around there. There we go. Hit enter. And then I'm going to go to the form or sorry, surfaces and revolve. And as you can see, this is going to give us the exact shape that we want, which is this one right here. The only problem is that when we meet the the element right here, as you can see, this is not really like like melding or, or merging to the whole thing. So I'm going to go to vertex mode. I'm going to grab this vertex right here and this one right here. I'm going to press B, which is soft selection and then middle mouse button and drag. And now with a W, I'm just going to push this down. I'm going to really push this up all the way to the center. There we go. So that we can really conform, maybe even a little bit more so that we can really conform. There we go. This to the surface, maybe a little bit less, uh, something like that. There we go. Perfect. Now you can see this thing is looking really weird because it's like uh, upside down. So I'm going to say mesh display and reverse to see the proper elements. Now you can see that we have three lines right there. 
the big question is should we model them or should we texture them i think we can model them doesn't really like seem that bit big of a deal so i'm going to go poly modeling to my cut tool and i'm going to add one line in the middle and another one right there i'm going to grab one get rid of b two and three grab those three guys and then i'm going to say a bevel we're going to bevel them small fraction and then grab those face uh, edges that we have right there and this is a very cool trick watch carefully i'm going to press Control e I'm gonna extrude a little bit, just a little bit, and then control E again and extrude a little bit more, and then control E again and just extrude a little bit more. What I'm doing there is I'm adding the edge loops, the support edges, while doing the bevel. So that when I press number three, we get this very, very cool effect right there. Delay history, and there we go. So yeah, that's it. Now that we have this, the only thing that we need to do is we need to duplicate this uh, like eight times around. I'm gonna show you a very, very cool trick, but before I do that, I want to remind you guys that we just released our newest course, and even though it's a Blender course, there's a lot of modeling techniques that you can also apply inside of Maya. Take a look at this. Hey guys, do you want to learn how to create amazing 3D weapons? Well, look no further. In this course, I will show you everything you need to know to create this amazing result. My name is Abraham Leal, I have over 13 years of experience in the industry, and I will be your instructor throughout this course. In this course, we'll cover everything from modeling to rendering a fantasy weapon with the best quality and results. I will be teaching you industry-proven techniques and workflows so that you too can create amazing AAA assets. We will be using Blender and Substance Painter to do this, and I will be guiding you through every step of the way. Don't worry if you don't know the basics. We have a chapter zero where we will be covering everything about Blender so that you too can achieve great results. We have a full support network as well in our different socials, so make sure to join and get the most out of this experience. Join me in this exciting journey and become the greatest artist you can be. There we go. So yeah, we even have a chapter two. So if you've never used Blender and you want to learn a little bit about it, you're going to learn it right there. So I'm going to grab this guy right here. As you can see, the build points already on the center. And here we can use a very, very powerful tool, which is called the Duplicate Special. So we know, as you can see right here, that we have eight of these guys. So if we divide 360 by eight, we know that we should get whoop, 360 divided by eight. Oh my God, come on. 360 divided by 8, we should get 45. There we go. So I'm going to go to Edit, Duplicate Special. Very important. Pivot point is on the center of the whole thing. And we're going to have 7 copies, and we're going to rotate this 45 degree angles each. My block number is not working. There we go. So this is X, Y, and C. Every time you see three channels or three boxes in the Maya, it's always X, Y, and C. We hit Apply, and uh, it didn't work. And why did it not work? It did not work because... It's on the Z axis. <laughs> so file duplicate, or sorry, edit duplicate is special. And we're going to go on the Z axis 45. There we go. Hit apply. And boom, look at that. We get all of our little handles around our very nice, um, in, in Spanish, we call this Timon. Um, Helm, I think it's Helm is the proper word. Okay, so let's go for the centerpiece now. It's just a cylinder. So we're going to create a cylinder, rotate this 90 degrees so that it's facing us. And we're going to match the circumference of the cylinder or the diameter. There we go. We go to face mode, select all the faces right there, control E. We're going to offset a little bit to create a little like metal border that we have. Control E, push it in, control E, offset again, control E, offset again a little bit more as you can see that's a little bit heavier and then i'm gonna grab this guys right here and of course the ones on the back Control e and push them forward we could also push them uh or we can actually just just uh, we could also do just one we don't have to do both sides at the same time because we can always mirror at the very end i'm gonna grab the edges now this guy this guy this guy this guy this guy and that inner guy right there this one as well we're gonna bevel two segments actually let's do three segments i'm going to do a slightly bigger fraction but here's the thing i'm going to change the depth to zero and when i do that as you can see instead of having a, a round corner i'm going to have like a chisel corner so when we press number three the effect is going to be slightly different it's going to give us a, a more like machine look now um this one i'm going to press shift and right click to go into the mirror option and we're going to mirror this on the z negative axis well, let me just make sure, yeah, see negative X and hit, uh, it's not going to be bounding, but it's going to be object and hit apply. And as you can see now, oh, it did not work. Oh, let's freeze transformation, of course. There we go. 
So apply, and there we go. So now we have the same sort of bevel that we have here on the front that's gonna be on the back. And that's it. So second piece done. Now this one, this one's gonna be tricky. I'm gonna show you a very cool trick here. So I'm gonna start with a cylinder in this case. And the reason I'm gonna start with a cylinder is because I need to do this sort of like square shapes and, and this other base that we have right there. So I'm gonna start with this one right around there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring all of this uh, edges or, or this like bottom face, there we go. Control E, and I'm gonna extrude all the way down, right there. Then I'm gonna start using my cut tool to add the loops where I know that we're gonna need to change the circumference of this whole thing. So for instance, right there, we can grab this edge, just scale it down, bring it down a little bit. This one, we can push it out. This one, we can push it out as well. And then this one, we can push it out as well a little bit more. And then over here, you can see that these faces are like extruded faces. So I'm gonna grab them all. Control E, a little bit of offset and a little bit of extrusion because that's a very like round effect. There we go. And the only one that I'm gonna like harden is this one right here by adding another bevel, two segments and a small fraction. So when we press number three, we get the very nice effect right there. We're gonna delete this upper faces so that when we mirror, we can get the proper mirror. But here's where the interesting thing is gonna happen. As you can see, we need to go from a circular thing to a square object. So I'm gonna grab this faces right here, Control E, sorry, Control F11 is a good shortcut to select all of those faces. And I'm gonna press Control E to bring this down into where or to where they touch this guy right here. Now I'm gonna select uh, this faces and I'm gonna go into isolate select so that we're only seeing this guys. We're gonna go to the top view and I'm gonna select all of this five vertex right here and I'm gonna scale them. And I'm gonna select this five vertex up here and I'm gonna scale them. Select this five or six vertex right here, this one right there, scale them, and then this one's right here and scale them. So as you can see, we've successfully like changed the silhouette for, uh, of a square into this, um, or in this cylinder into this square right here. If we wanna make this even more like a square, which I can see here that that's actually the, the ideal shape, I'm gonna go back here, let's go to the top view. I'm gonna use all of these guys and scale them, and then all of these guys and scale them. And again, to give them a little bit more, you know, like proper position right here because they look a little bit more like a rectangle, I'm gonna grab all of the faces. I'm just gonna start scaling them out a little bit. There we go, something like that. I'm gonna go to the front view, delete the bottom face, and in a very similar fashion to what we did with the other ones, I'm gonna grab this vertex. In this case, I'm just manually gonna like create your curvature so that they match the curvature of the of the wheel here of the of the helm. There we go. Now when we see it from the front, I can still well that's is that the front? It looks a little bit weird here. So I'm gonna grab this guy's right here, this guy's right here, and I'm also gonna push them out a little bit. There we go, that looks a little bit better. So now let's go into uh, single mode. And uh, one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this thing. So I'm gonna control E and with scale, I'm gonna scale them in. And then I'm gonna say edit mesh, or sorry, mesh fill hole. And we're gonna poke that face. So edit mesh and poke. Do, 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 do. There we go. So now we got a, a clean cap right there. If we press number three, it's starting to look good, but we need to do some adjustments. First of all, I'm gonna add a support edge right here and another one right here and right here. So we get a very like hard edge effect right there. Also over here, look at that. And if we want this like elements to look a lot more square, here's a small trick that I'm gonna show you. I am gonna add, I'm gonna go to the corners here. I'm gonna delete this elements. Right there actually let's let's do this in a symmetrical way so i'm going to grab this guy and this guy this guy and this guy and we're going to delete those and then i'm going to grab my insert edge loop and we're going to insert an edge loop so that it stops right there see that i really don't care that it goes to the pole down there because we're not going to see it but over here i don't want to add that and as you can see what that's going to do is it's going to give me a very nice sharp edge right there now the only thing i need to do is i need to solve this guys so those two guys Merge to center, those two guys merge to center. Oh. Merge to center, those two guys merge to center, and those two guys merge to center. We can just go over here, go to all of these holes, select them in edge mode, and we can say mesh and fill hole. And by doing that, if we press number three, look at that. We get a very, very nice effect. 
very cool topology and I don't really care about that. We don't see it. And this is working perfectly fine. We're going to go front view now. Again, if we need to move some of this points, this is the, the moment to do it. So let's let's just do a little bit of overlap. Overlap is not bad. Like it's not going to like kill your like 3D work or anything. If anything, it's going to make it look a little bit tighter. So there we go. Because that line right there, uh, especially when we're texturing, it, it works very, very nicely. So let's freeze transformation, shift a right click again, and we're going to go over mirror. We're going to do a bounding box a Y axis in this case. I'm going to hit apply. And in this case, as you can see, it's not working. Why is it not working? X, is it X positive? X positive, of course, it's X positive. <laughs> there we go. So we go to the front view. And as you can see now, the only thing we need to do is we need to move some of this vertex down especially a lot of this guys and change the curvature a little bit. So I'm going to go to all of this guys. I'm just going to like, like just flatten them a little bit more and we're going to start polishing this guys the other way. And there we go. So now, as you can see, we got the very, very nice detail right in the center of the element. Let's go front view again. Uh, the pivot point, we need to move it to the center. So I'm going to press D and X to move it right there on the center of the grid. And by doing that, if I go now to edit and duplicate the special with the same settings that I had before, we get the full effect right here. This one seems to be a little bit high or, or like big. So I'm going to just scale it down to, to get or recover the shape. And look at that. With this, we're pretty much done with our element right here. Our helm is looking very, very nice. But now I'm going to show you a very cool technique that we can use here to animate this whole thing and, and do just like a like a nice camera trick. Maya is known for its animation things, right? So so by adding this element or this movement, we're going to be able to do something that looks very, very nice. So first, I'm going to delete history and freeze transformation. I'm not going to center pivot. I'm going to just, again, delete history, oh, delete history and freeze transformation on all of the elements. And we want to set a final like position for all of this, guys. So in this case, uh, I'm going to go down here to my timeline. I know my, my face is like covering most of it. I'm actually going to move it up here so that ooh, there we go. So that we can see it. I'm going to change my like time range from frame one to frame, let's say 120. So it's a very common like five second animation. And then I'm going to go to rendering. We're going to create a new camera panels look through selected. And over here, this is the, the shot that we're going to have. So that's perfectly fine. I actually like this uh, element, maybe a little bit closer, something like that. Perfect. Let's go outside to perspective view and uh, we're not going to move this camera. We're going to rename this camera shot cam. And now again, as I mentioned, we need to think about what the final position of this thing is going to be. So one second before the animation ends at let's say frame 95, I'm going to hit S and that what that's going to do is it's going to set a, a point for all of these elements to, um, to get to this position right here. Now we're going to go to the first elements and we need to decide how we want this thing to assemble. So I think the first thing I want is I want this guy right here to appear. So I'm going to set the scale of this thing to zero and this is going to pretty much disappear. And in let's say 15 frames, this thing is going to scale back itself to one. So as you can see now, when I do this, that thing is going to just like pop into existence like that. While this thing is popping into existence, let's say at around at this point, this one's going to start popping into existence. So in frame seven for this one, I'm going to hit S again to set a keyframe. And then in frame, uh, let's say 20, so a little bit after this one finished, this one's going to also appear. So in frame seven, the scale of that thing right there is going to be zero. And then by frame 20, this thing is going to appear. So see how we are creating a little bit of overlap there on the animation, which is going to make everything look very, very nice. So we got this first one and there we go. Now, another thing we could do, for instance, is we can add, let's say, a 360 rotation to this thing. So what's going to happen now is when we start moving this, this thing is going to rotate into position. Very, very cool, right? Now, this one's right here. As you can see, all of the pivot points are on the center of the object, on the center of the world. So if we scale this down, if we hit R and we scale this down, as you can see. Wait, did I duplicate this, guys? seems like I accidentally duplicated this guys. How many times did I duplicate this? My God. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, so it seems like three times. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, 
three. There we go. Perfect. So now if we select all of this guys, what we can do is after this thing appears right there, like, or, or as it is appearing, let's say right around there frame. Um, actually, no, let's wait for it to appear. And then right after it settles frame 25, let's say, we're going to scale these things to zero. Okay, so zero scale. And what's going to happen now is a couple of frames after let's say frame 40, we're going to scale them back to one. So what's going to happen is once this thing settles, all of these things are going to be like born. Now this guy right here, I'm going to eliminate this keyframe by right clicking and saying delete. And that way we get one, two, three. We have an extra one right here that we don't want. Let's a couple of extra ones. Apparently, there we go. So it's one, two, three. And then what I want for this one, this one's going to be an interesting one. I want this thing to, I want one of them to appear and then kind of like roll and create all of the different elements. So what I'm going to have to do, as you can see, all of this guys already have a rotation on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the rotations to zero. They're going to go all back to that same place. It appears like I also accidentally duplicated all of this guys right here. There we go. We should only have... There we go. So one, two, three, four, five. Excellent. So we're going to have all of this, guys. The pivot point of this, guys, is going to change. I don't want this pivot point to be right here. So I'm going to press D and move this up to right around here where or right around where the where the base of the object is. So now if I scale, as you can see, especially if I scaled all the revolve surfaces. Wait, do I have more revolve surfaces than I should? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's leave this extra ones. There we go. So once we scale all of this, guys, as you can see, let me go back to poly modeling center pivot point. Let's move the pivot point of all of this guys down to that base. There we go. So now if I grab all of this guys and I scale, as you can see, we're going to get this sort of effect. Actually, now that I think of it, we're not going to be able to do that because I want to roll them around the whole thing. So that's fine. Uh, let's go back to front view, grab all of this guys again. Let's move the pivot point back here. And what's going to happen is we are going to we're going to start first with a zero scale. Like after this thing attaches right there, let's say right around there. Let's delete all of these elements. So right around frame 50, all of these guys are going to be like appearing. So a couple of frames before that, let's say frame 42, 42 seems good. We're going to set this to zero. And what's going to happen, as you can see right here, is these guys are going to be born. We're going to be appearing from the very center right there. And once they appear, I want them to start rotating until they find their proper position. And I want this to happen in, let's say, 25 frames. So in 25 frames, all of these guys are going to start rotating a specific amount of degrees. So in this case, it's 45 degrees. So it's going to be 45. But all of these guys are going to rotate 90. And then all of these guys are going to rotate 135 and then this guy's gonna rotate there 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 and there perfect so now as you can see we're gonna get this very cool effect where the whole handle gets open and once all of these things have uh, like su successfully done their whole thing i'm gonna group all of them and in frame let's say 90 i'm gonna do a quick like turnaround, let's say like 15 frames where this thing is just going to rotate 360 degrees so that we do a, a full turn in just like a couple of seconds. And then maybe one thing we can do at the very end, let's say from frame 150 until we end the animation, we're going to do an S over here oh, on the group. This is on the group, by the way, we're going to S and then by one frame 120, we just disappear. So now when we do the whole thing, we get this. And then pop. Not bad, right? So yeah, that's about it, my friends. Um, I'm gonna do the the like the full animation so that you can see it here at the very end. I'm gonna add some very like basic wood textures. Um 
to the whole thing but uh, this is one of the great things that you can do with maya like you don't need to be a pro at maya to just very quickly do a model like this and do a simple animation to create an interesting effect so if you like make sure to leave us a like a comment share subscribe to the channel over half of you are not subscribed and it could really really help us to achieve the 1000 subscribers milestone that we're going for also remember that we have our discord channel available we're active there you can ask questions like have a good experience with the whole community and that uh, yeah, make sure to follow us everywhere else in the in the rest of the socials. And if you want to check the newest course, the link is also going to be down here in the description. So thank you very much, my friends. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.